and way of life. Life, life, life. Um, life, okay. Recording. Let me prepare everything for the recording. Give me a sec. I'm almost ready. Almost. Okay, I am ready. I am ready. Let's start recording in three, two, one. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Non Intuitive Beat Podcast brought to you by the Leaders Club that you are actually part of it too if you're listening to us but do consider elevating your club membership status by joining our discord channel maybe you will be the first who will be actually active there who are not us uh and with that i want to say hi in this virtual studio with me to dmitry mananikov say hi to people hi everyone and there's usually the most annoying voice of this podcast slava kovalevsky Oh, my friend, do you have any ideas where do you want to start? I actually like one of your topics, uh, but yeah, up to you, up to you. Uh, we can start with a game jam. So I um, I participated in game jam. It was a two week long, uh, created by um, a YouTuber with name Acerola. You can see a button at the top, Acerola Jam Zero. Mm -hmm. So someone actually made the jam and he actually made uh, promised prizes for people who win the gem, like 500 bucks or something, which is pretty cool. So like many people actually, uh, you can see it's already have almost thousand games submitted, uh, which is usually happens when, when there's a prize. Um, yeah, I tried it, uh, decided to make a small game, uh, essentially a small casual city builder in Gadot. I didn't spend like m most of my time just making for fun because I really enjoy this incremental games and city builders. And I wanted something like a small and cozy that I can uh, build like a city in a few clicks without like overthinking it. Mm -hmm. So far it's good. Um, and I, I made game in a Gadot, uh, which I really like to work because previously I worked with Unity and Default and like it was always like time consuming, but this one. And actually the theme I want to discuss is not game itself, right? Um, but I'm more interesting to discuss uh, like a peonated software because Gadot is one of these softwares made, it's open source and you think about like, okay, it's influenced by many people, but it has like a list of core contributors who are very, how to say, they have like idea how it should develop, be developed and mm -hmm. go towards this goal. And okay. I find like the best open source technologies are actually like this, when you have like a one or a few people who has a really strong like picture in mind how things should look like and they just implement it and obviously they listen to feedback they address it but when someone hey say hey you your tool needs this feature and it doesn't really fit into vision like this like a core group can actually say hey no it doesn't work we, we're not accepting it because it's open source and you make a perfect pull request we decided to go different way. um and that's what i like about gadot which is surprising because unity is actually like a I would say like uh, it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. They should have a vision, but feels like they don't. Like the whole tool, like has like so many moving parts and like uh, different components and different tools inside Unity. I compete with each other. You don't know which one to pick. But this one like very narrow, very straight. Like you do things in one way, um, and I really like it. You know. So what do you think? Uh, one thing that you mentioned resonated with me uh, in a weird way, so to speak, when you mentioned that uh, tool has to be opinionated in the sense that there should be idea, there should be philosophy, and there should be enforcer of this philosophy, community that says you cannot, you cannot go left or right, so to speak. I agree with that part 100%. However, the, the, the twist that I want to add. Okay. Um, the tool itself should be opinionated less uh, about how the users will use it. So let me give mm -hmm. you an example. Angular versus uh, React. 
one of okay. the biggest difference that the people who, who got exposed to both of them will tell you that angular is very opinionated about how you should do the project mm -hmm. and angular is actually the tool that you do you <laughs> it's just a tool so to speak and you can do whatever you want and in this case, I actually would suggest that tools should be opinionated less. Hey, do, do you mean like, re, like you mentioned Angular twice, but you mean React, you do you? Uh, oh, yes. Sorry. In React, you do you? Yes. In Angular, there is a very opinionated way. So from that perspective, I do not think that tools should be opinionated. But opinion about the tool itself, how the tool should be shaped, how the tool should look like. Yes, 100% agree with you. There should be a community that's... Uh, uh, religiously false. Mm -hmm. Maybe disagree on this one. Okay. Okay. Uh, obviously, right? Like, if you make tools that you say users how to do things, you end up with a situation when they want something that doesn't really—it's not possible in your system because it's constrained. Mm -hmm. However, for things like, if there is a something you can do in a three different ways, and they all pretty much the same in terms of like complexity and like, you just pick. It should be one instead. Like example, right? Like if you write JavaScript, mm -hmm. you have four in loop, you have four off loop, you have uh, array methods like for each and map, and some of them pretty much overlaps. You can use any of them for the same thing, and it's like just different. Like doesn't make really a difference. Mm -hmm. So you can agree in your in your team, but essentially it's, it's the same. And opposite to this is a go link, right? Like you have for loop. That's it. Deal with it. Live with it. And every time you see for loop, you know like why it's for loop. And every time you want to do something, you don't pick a different things. And that's what I'm talking about. I like, like like for task for a particular task. Ideally, I want like one thing. It doesn't mean like it doesn't allow other tasks. But for a, for example, um, UI system in the games, right? Like game engines usually don't have a good UI systems, but some of them do. Mm -hmm. Dot has a good UI system. It's opinionated. It's like some select of controls. Uh, you can add your own custom, but if you want a button, there's a button, and the way you style it is also a bit opinionated, but it allows you to do anything. You just mm -hmm. know if you want button, you go this way. When you Google how to implement UI in Unity, you have three different systems, literally. One is deprecated, <laughs> one is uh, in a beta, and one doesn't do everything. So you mix and match and then try to figure out like which one to use and it's like pain in the ass. You know, on that note, I really like a philosophy that got adopted by Kubeflow and Kubernetes back in the day uh, that state that your product should have a low bar but high, high ceiling. In the mm. sense that if you want to do a thing, there should be a very clear opinionated way how to do it. But as you progress and you're converting yourself to a power user, ceiling should be so high in the sense that you should be able to do anything you want later on in your pass. Funny, it actually in, uh, overlaps with a famous uh, Blizzard game idea, like easy to learn, hard to master when you get like easy entry, but they're like they're always like something to learn and master better. Uh, makes sense. Uh, yeah, it's actually indeed overlaps. Uh, there is small, small deviation. I would say that in this case, it should not be hard. But yes, the idea is yes, you can do anything you want. Yep, yep. My friend, we deviated from the main part. Tell me, what have you created? <laughs> How I mean, can you can you? literally click a run game and it's I, I didn't want to spoil for people. Do you want to, to first tell us uh, several words? And yes, no, I, I think it's better to show. Okay, it, essentially, okay. it's like very small. Obviously, like because again, I created it in a few days and there's not m much content. It's only a few buildings you put. Uh, but the idea you build a system or build a small city, picking from different uh, buildings and you need to balance happiness wealth and uh, health of your citizens by placing um, buildings close to each other in a proper way um again game is pretty limited because you have only the four buildings but i'm thinking about either expand for more buildings or to convert to something a bit different um, i was inspired a lot by a game called dorf romantic which is like very cozy city builder you can google it, it door from matic awesome. So, sorry. Uh, no, it's like a dwarf romantic in one word. Oh, dwarf romantic, uh, something like this, I guess. Yes. Uh, dwarf romantic. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh huh. And it's like very cozy. Like it, the game has a goal, but essentially, it's like you just like build the tiles which match each other from a deck of tiles. 
Oh, this is a table game. Oh no, that AI actually was inspired by computer game, but I guess they also have table game. Man, this is so cool. I'm so buying it. I'm so purchasing. I, I, I love table games. So, uh, so yes. But, you know, I'm actually surprised that you named this game because for me, when I saw this, I immediately uh, thought about SimCity 1. Oh, yeah, obviously, like <laughs> SimCity. Is in, um, <laughs> the difference because in SimCity, it's usually it's much larger, much more, much complex, more complex systems. Um, and I wanted something, you know, like just almost mindlessly to put um, I definitely need more uh, feeling in the game better effects better sounds because they usually give a good impression of such games yeah I probably need to put at least one more office in the hospital uh, <laughs> in my village but yeah this gave me vibe of SimCity I, I spent so many hours of the SimCity one I cannot describe this <laughs> like have you played the uh, city skylines you told me about it, uh, but I have not. Uh, I have not tried it yet. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have uh, too much uh, time right now to try things. And then, you know, I really hate that I starting game and not finishing. So I committing to the game these days. The problem you can't finish this one. It's just like time time hole. It will consume so much time that you can play <laughs> endlessly. Hmm. I understand that, uh, but at least the re for, for this type of the game, I'm playing until I stop enjoying it. Hmm. Uh, or you, you know you time to time having uh, entering this mode where you're playing unconsciously that I also hate it's it's become mm -hmm. more a bubble gum than actual game uh, that I also hate but yeah um, I wanted to say something oh yeah I, I should not forget about the uh, dwarf romantic duel I need to yeah I need to, uh, I need to put it some on my to-do list <laughs> later later okay I want to recommend our listeners uh, the game for people who uh, are listening, not watching slodayet.h.io and I actually will put the link oh yeah, slash my dash happy dash city and I will put it in the show notes for sure I would highly recommend Obviously, the, only, mm -hmm. the only catch about the uh, Gadot uh, still has an issue with the Safari on the Mac OS um, and for some reason my game consume insane amount of memory and crash in Safari uh, to be uh, like, I'm trying to like saying it's not my fault because I actually tried to debug it, removing everything, and I have an empty scene doing it. So it's a well known bug, and sometimes it appears, sometimes not. I still can't understand why. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to play, use Google Chrome or Firefox <laughs> or any other browser which is not Safari. And of course, when when uh, Dimitri told me this, the first thing I did, I opened the Safari, <laughs> punch it in. And, uh, it consumed immediately five gigabytes, like like nothing immediately. It ate five gigabytes, and after some time, uh, the Safari killed it because Safari has this feature to killing the tabs before they consuming too much memory. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty strange, bug because there's nothing happening there. Why it's consuming? I don't really know. Memory leaks, it happens, it happens. Yeah, but I don't know where. Not in my code, at least. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Some, someone else. <laughs> yes, it's someone else's problem. Yes, yes, 100%. Um, <clears throat> okay, okay. Um, where do we, we go from here? Should we switch to AI? What do you think about AI topics? Of course. So. I have several things I wanted to share. So first topic for today, I got the invite for IDX. So what is IDX? Uh, it's a project from Google and it's effectively AI uh, integrated uh, SDK studio. No, that's SDK, uh, ID, yeah, AI integrated ID. And to be fair, it's not a new thing. One of the most popular one on the market right now is Cursor. This is probably the most effective and most mature right now. And even if this one is so-so in many cases. It's good, don't get me wrong. Comparing to everything else is amazing. Uh, but it, I look mm -hmm. at this Cursor, Cursor SH. Is it like editor? It looks like VS Code with, uh, with what? They all, Project IDX from Google is also VS Code actually. Oh, I see. Yeah, because really VS Code is uh, one of the rare few that provides a true multi-platform, including Web ID, that is uh, customizable mm. all the way I'm, down. I'm, mm -hmm. It's weird, it's like, do they make their own editors and not just plugin? I don't understand why it can, can be a plugin to VS Code. 
Oh, that's what I'm saying. They, they, ID, it's, it's not a editor, just like code name. Uh, th- th- that's what I'm saying. They're all VS Code based. They're doing extensions of Vectory. Oh, okay. So they all j- just an extensions, two different levels. Like some are more deeper, some are less. But yeah, it's it's extension. And um, so I try to build a project. I'm building a project which I want to share later today. I haven't finished it, but um, you know, like uh, I had an idea about the project, and I got invited to IDX. Why not to start the project uh, in the IDX? And it is horrible for now. For now, and I'll tell you why. So one second. Uh, sorry, I was about to sneeze, <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> and it didn't happen. Okay, so why it's horrible right now the idx is effectively a tool that can answer a question about the part of the source code that you have highlighted that's read literally it nothing else so essentially it's copilot no the copilot is so much better (laughs) (laughs) copilot can understand context and it can um uh, try to generate the source code so Mm -hmm. this this one what, Uh what this one is doing so this stuff uh, focusing on, uh, by the way, there is a huge difference between where it's aiming to be and where it's now. So it's aiming to be compiled on steroids, much better than compiled. It, mm-hmm. You know, like in the current days when everything uh, in AI develops so fast, like if you aim to be compiled on steroids, like when you implement it, compiled will be so much upfront. Um. I kind of agree with you, and kind of because um, there, there are several reasons for that. Where Copilot is, in my opinion, losing, they don't have penetration on, on the level they need. What I mean by that, Copilot right now is uh, extensions. Okay. And even the best extensions cannot go as deep as uh, completely rewritten ID and yes um, this uh, this IDX is still VS code it's still in extensions but is a uh, it's a VS code fully controlled by Google so they actually have a much deeper integration I wouldn't be surprised if they cannot even update your VS code fast enough because they rewrote part of the, this VS code so theoretically they can be better <laughs> It's, it sounds like a really weak argument because extensions in VS Code can do a lot. And plus, if I use this one, can I use other extensions? You mentioned could be lagging behind some features. It's a bit weird from this perspective. I actually agree with you. So, okay, I agree with you. We have no idea where it will be, but putting this aside, just focusing on what they are today. Today, mm-hmm. they're they're very, very naive and bad, b- bad things. So it can do two things they started from the tool that copilot calls copilot chat yes in copilot you have a chat Mm -hmm. so they effectively started from the chat so you can highlight any source code and you can ask question about that part of the code okay but there is several problems they still don't have access to index your source code completely this is experimental feature they highly recommend Mm -hmm. not to use it uh, which means that Gemini and on the other side is Gemini only can see the part of the source code that you have highlighted. Mm. So, you mm. know, the first thing I tried, I, I wrote the logic, I opened the chart, I said, write me unit test. He and the answer was, for what? <laughs> like, I don't have any context. <laughs> so, okay, here is the name of the file, write me unit test for this file. So, like, which file? <laughs> I don't see any file. <laughs> no files. Yeah, so after two or three tries, I realized that they embedded the Gemini chat that can have exposure to something that you have highlighted, uh, do, did right click and says, I want to ask question about this piece of the, of the code. Now, mm-hmm. they do have code completion that is horrible. It's so horrible. Um, I was importing a uh, function from in, in Python. I was importing function from another file. Mm-hmm. And when I wrote from, it clearly understood file system file names because it's actually suggested me the name of the files that I have. But when I reached the point when I need to write an import and now I actually need to import something from the file, it clearly did not understand that it need to look inside of that file because it starts suggest to, uh, suggesting to me mm-hmm. name of the function 
clearly based from the pass of the package, not from the from the internity of that file. Even though this is file like laying around, it's you situation can... where just like simple heuristic would work much better. Yeah. Yep, yep. I would assume that because indexing of the source code is experimental feature that is disabled by default, and you can actually go and try check it and enable. And by the way, I wish I can report better about this feature, but I have realized that that checkbox even exists maybe half an hour ago. So I have not tried it with the checkbox enabled, but they have this experimental feature to index the source code and without it, I would assume because they're not indexing anything, they, they literally cannot do proper, proper code completion as well. So it's weird. It's, it's super weird. Um, now, I honestly actually believe in in ability of the Google to provide better product uh, for many, many reasons. But we'll see. I, I, I can believe in their ability to provide better product, but I'm not sure about their ability not to close it in a, some not so far time. <laughs> Not to fuck up another way, <laughs> right? That's, yeah. that's <laughs> because I would not be surprised if they close it like in a year and announce project XDI. Oh, or whatever. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, IDX Plus or IDX One. Uh, also, anything that has a chat in a Google is cursed. Oh my God! Yes, they just have released another chat message. <laughs> oh my God, yes, you're, you're right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, IDX has a chat messenger. So, so yeah. <laughs> um, yes, but here is so. Here is my my take on the reasoning behind, and let's now come back to potential and why I think that they actually have a potential. So, LLM network by design are consuming a lot of power, a lot of electricity, a lot of compute. This is by design. Mm -hmm. And realistically, not many companies can uh, handle that. What I mean by this, even ChatGPT, I'm not speaking about being from Microsoft that actually can uh, subsidize by a lot. I'm speaking specifically about ChatGPT. If you're using paid version and I'm a subscriber, we all know that you have a cap. You have a limit on the amount of requests. You cannot mm -hmm. just chat with this uh, forever. One of the reason is exactly because they cannot optimize LLM well enough. I mean, one of the guesses for a reason that I have, that they can optimize about how costly it is and how much compute versus electricity it actually demands mm -hmm. to compute the response. Gemini Pro that comes with a Google subscription actually doesn't have a gap, which hints to me that they have much better solution to the problem that's even open AI. And the reason why it's important, these things that we just vocalized, actually what will be a limiting factor of how many, how big chunk of the, your repository will be indexed processed by LLM. Uh, because another way of optimization, which actually OpenAI now applying, I don't know if you heard, but the, the pre prom mm -hmm. that they started applying, be lazy effectively, like don't. Uh, oh, oh, okay. That's why all this, like, I give you 200 bucks to, to, to work better works. Mm -hmm. Because their default prompt, slowly they start doing default prompts that focusing on making responses shorter. I, it's a problem I would not mind making, like, sometimes I ask uh, chat GPT something like very simple questions that require, like, very simple answer. And instead, give me like a huge disclaimer, a huge explanation. I often have to add like, okay, give me a short answer. That makes sense. By the way, this is exactly the reason why I, since the GPTs was released, I no longer using vanilla GPT. I have my default GPT that I'm using for start. And it has all my pre-prompt with all the hacks enabled. And yeah, that works like a charm because yeah, default one is, is, is horrible, so to speak. Um, Okay, uh, by the way, if you haven't heard the Anthropic just have released uh, Cloud, what was the Cloud, uh, Cloud 3, Cloud 3 uh, model, and the biggest one that also has three of them, supposed to be better than ChatGPT 4 specifically, so Haiku and the small one. I, I just hear it's pretty good on coding. I haven't tried, but but yeah, her, hers is the same. Does uh, it have API or something? 
Yes, they do. Even though API is GA, uh, they don't have, uh, they don't give access easily. I have many friends uh, who mm. supposed to get because they have businesses and they're actually trying to get it and they still didn't get it. I want applications that just like give me a chat and then can go to different backends so I can quickly, you know, run like a question through three of them to get best answer. Okay, my friends, uh, let's discuss the project that I started building with uh, with these things because it's highly relevant. So I started doing um, uh, just one repository that actually have started with one of the hackathon that you and I did. Uh, and um, so the idea that I actually want in Python, I already have in Go very similar, but I want in Python to implement high level abstraction that allows you to build actors and to separate mm -hmm. several things actions actors and llms behind them mm -hmm. so you should be able to say here is four actors this one should be using chat gpt this one should be using mm -hmm. local llm this one should be using anthropic and um, uh, here is an action that this actor can do here is an action that this actor can do and now you actually have a pipeline and that pipeline could be mm -hmm. you asking local uh, LLM to do stuff and local LLM actually trying to understand and when it's confused and then trying to understand if this is complex enough, it's actually will do a call to ChatGPT to another actor that is smarter, mm -hmm. quote unquote. And now you theoretically can do much better cost optimization. Mm. Uh, even in between ChatGPT, you can have several actors, one 3.5, one 4.4, then kind of Claude for a completely different task, and then a pipeline that will be ping-ponging the task depending on circumstances in between. Uh, with the shared memory. So memory about your conversation is shared in between actors, it's just actors that are different. Mm. So mm -hmm. It would be actually even more interesting to have separate memory between them, you know, so different questions can go to different actors depending on privacy for example if i ask private question go to my own local but if i ask generic question go to chat gpt something like this yeah that makes sense and this is uh, so if actually to combine them um i'm thinking about concept of a pipeline or some higher mm -hmm. level up and that should be property of that higher level thing where you saying okay memory should be shared between these two and these three mm -hmm. but not in between or things like that um so and it's actually started remember our project where we used uh, def, uh several actors for build a game mm -hmm. uh, so i just want to generalize a lot of ideas from there um and yeah that's that that's the whole thing um and uh, yeah that's the tldr nothing been done so far <laughs> so i describe an amazing project that i would love to use it doesn't exist i wrote a roadmap and even i was thinking to mean uh, not the means to actually create a page with nfts where people can mean them to support the project that's but this is because you are a manager <laughs> if you'd be a programmer you would start by setting up your code style id <laughs> and, and uh, unit tests <laughs> oh yes 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 and I would say that we are now in the red stage where nothing is working <laughs> on my unit test. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. So this is the thing that I wanted to build with, with IDX that I'm still trying to build. And on the AI node, last thing is uh, there is this Devim. So there is a release from from new startup um, that doing Devine and effectively Devine is uh, what they they say um, a developer AI developer that's trying to do to do tasks. Uh, have you heard about Devine? No. Nope. So um, they have a several interesting interesting examples that they are showing them, but in a nutshell. Um, this is an LLM that I'm trying to find a good example where I'm trying to describe. So this is effectively LLM in a nutshell that actually have then access to comments like read file, edit file, update file, run the comment, do stuff. As a result, if you actually correctly give it the uh, comment, uh, um, not the set of the comments with the access to file system, it is capable of fully running, writing, and debugging an application. 
and they have uh, several cherry picks of examples where it's actually doing an amazing job and um, it's it capable of do full end-to-end -end from identifying bug, for example, on a particular repository or from the target of what it's need to do up to actually fully functional implementation. So to understand the context and files and everything? Yes, uh, because, uh, and uh, to be fair, they're applying the same thing that uh, a year ago I was trying to do with Jessica that worked reasonably well, where you having a concept of memory and the actions from file system. So now it's actually can absorb file system, can save information to the memory, then can read files, save data about these files. So in this way, it eventually will learn about your repository then it can learn about part of it deeply where it's need to change something and then they can do the change interesting now is it like mm -hmm. what google id is supposed to do no yes under the hood they also supposed to do <laughs> something like that it's a clever hacks to make sure that something is actually working as intended uh, and uh, yes you're absolutely right under the hood is exactly what they su are supposed to be doing now uh, to, to be fair, no, uh, on this scale, the, you cannot enable it on IDE because it literally can write the whole repository. So that's, that's mm -hmm. a little bit dangerous from, from perspective of, of IDE, but yes, something like that. Now, the thing is, um, from what I remember in my experiments, uh, A, uh, what they showing to you usually would be a cherry picked examples. So really it's working on, on like 10 to 20% of the box. So 20% of the box that you can find on the repository of a particular project, it theoretically capable of solving, which is by the way, a huge step up from, from any other models. Yeah, uh, even like, you know, like there are actually class of bugs that e actually easy solvable and also easy to verify that like fix itself is not bringing a issue. For example, um, it, it, I had the same, like, when you migrate, like, JavaScript to TypeScript code base, mm -hmm. or you migrate, like, old flow type to TypeScript, like, some something like this, right? Often, like, when you migrate, you suppress many typings, like, mm -hmm. essentially do any type. Having this tool, like, saying you can go there and fix, and actually easy verifiable. The code will compile, and it's also very easy to verify that, like, no shady logic included. Yeah, I think I think you absolutely. You, you, uh, yeah, that I, I I see that I see the use case one hundred percent. Now, where I have seen it doesn't work, and uh, it doesn't work from my experience. I haven't used the Vin, but I, uh, from what I have heard, uh, and people are saying that oh, examples are very cherry picked, so it uh, has different level of of quality work, so to speak, on different projects. So. Uh, in example that I implemented in the past, there were several big problems. One was loops. So this thing can actually end up in a loop in a sense that it has a limited memory. So now it goes to learn about part of the project, realizing that this part of the project is not fully what it needs, goes another part and forgetting the first part. And then, in 20 steps from now, because it, it doesn't have even, even longer memory, it no longer remembers that part A that it already have investigated and forgot actually has nothing to do with the task, but because how file names are structured, mm -hmm. the file, it, it will try to do it again. And mm -hmm. now you have a loop that only represents after step number 20. Uh, and that's it. It will just go in this loop forever, mental loop, so to speak. That's fun. Yeah, it's... Uh... I know I'm. I'm still like um, not fully convinced that it will be good anytime soon. But I really hope. Um, for example, sometimes like I work on my game. I use mm -hmm. GDScript. It's internal language in Godot, which is similar to Python, and Copilot works pretty bad for that one. Like because we don't have like enough code base, so you have to um, like it do like like what do what it does nicely it's actually what i like you know sometimes like you you do repeat re, repeating things mm -hmm. like, it's easy to repeat them just like annoying then it does really well but when you try to guess like what like it's better just keep it and write myself yeah i i, I hear you i hear you yeah yeah 100 um i wanted to say something about this uh oh yes 
you know, I'm pretty sure that how we have a pattern of developer development, we will have a pattern of development with AI, AI driven development, so, so to speak. And it's clearly already that this pattern will require you to make a judgment call if this is, this is a task that easily doable by AI. The problem with AI is that it's inconsistent with the quality of the results. But if you as a developer actually will be able to quickly identify, okay, this is a 15 box that I can outsource to AI, these 20 I have to do myself, your productivity will grow up, uh, will go up, sorry. But the biggest problem that a lot of the people will try it, will see that it's inconsistent, so they will not try it again, because this is the worst case yeah. you can do about the customer. Yeah. I think it's more or less like learning in terms of, again, like, for example, right now, when I'm doing something like a, Imagine I have a vector and I need to increase like every part of vector like by one, mm -hmm. like vector X plus one, vector Y plus one, vector Z plus one. I know like ChatGPT or Copilot will do it very well. So I usually just hit tab because I know it, it will get it. So now I already learned, I know the patterns in the code, mm -hmm. it will work and I don't worry about it. So I think like more and more, like it's, it became more and more uh smart and i will also learn what things it can do so i also learn okay i'll just can delegate these parts i think it may be pretty natural over time yes but this is from your perspective of developer has tons of the experience now think about how we're going to teach young developers these days oh yeah that's pretty bad <laughs> 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 I have no idea. I, I like. I don't know. Like how, like people companies will expect more productivity from junior because you have chat GPT, but how they gather gather experience? I don't know. It's it's yeah. hard to say. Yeah, I wonder if last wave of the simplifying of the development actually have led to increase in the, the amount of developers. So even though theoretically we have simplified the development languages, we now had Java and the theory was that we will need less developers because it's much simpler so we can write faster, which was true. But in results, we have created more developers. Yeah, but it's also the scope still is not expanded. Like finally, right? Like, there are so many things in the world that not automated, they still can benefit or maybe not benefit, but they still so you can still get some code right um and i think this growth will continue regardless of ai yeah i only wonder what have happened for example with india because literally tons of tons of the part of what they produce as uh, to the export can be translated to gpt tokens eventually I mean, again, I think it's like a market balance, right? Like we get less expensive uh, workforce here and there. We just like get more things done because before, okay, you need uh, to make a new mobile app. It costs you like X dollars, but now it will cost like 10 times less. Yeah. I wonder, uh, I know we are so out of, of uh, topic that we started, but I promise last thing before we'll, we'll come back to our, to our list of topics to discuss. We have the crisis in IT right now, obviously. Every, everyone contracting, sure there is some company that's growing, but overall our industry is contracting, contracting fast. And, and uh, last time when this was happening in 2000 something, what have saved the whole industry is App Store. App Store was the one that originated back in the day and it created so many new workplaces with the developers who, uh, new type of developers, mobile developers, thousands and thousands of new workspace. These have saved the whole industry and it uh, created this niche right at the time where we had a crisis. I wonder what will save the industry this time. Maybe the GPTs, maybe actually this is what will save the industry and we will have the people who will be writing uh layers on top of chat gpt's uh, thousands of them soon maybe um also could be again like all this vr apple vision pro thingy it's not really working right now but who knows maybe like in a few iterations we say hey like every company now building up for this because everyone because facebook also doubled down this one maybe it also will be market i don't know it's hard hard to predict actually you're right yes i have not thought about this uh, have you bought already <laughs> nope, I'm not going to. Uh, I trying to resist still, so I have not bought. But uh, yes, I'm pretty sure one day, one day I will. I really hope they will release like second version, not really, because 
Um, the problem this headset have, I like they really hit me. So I don't want like the weight, the way it's like holds on the head. That's what I don't like. But maybe the second version will be better. You know, as someone who driving motorcycle, I don't, I don't mind having the heavy things on my head. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I just like how it sits actually, because like again, helmet sits like on a whole head. This was like with a strap, um, because I really like what's inside. When I see reviews, how people describe it, like how it works, it's really impressive. That's what I, I really want to try. Um, I just wait like for a bit better form factor. By the way, I fully agree with you that in the sense that everything inside clearly states that when this will be mainstream, there will be no way back. So this is the future. And uh, I, uh, you need to be really retarded not to agree that this is, <laughs> this is the future, not this version, but exactly as you stated, when we have a better usable, more usable product, so to speak. Now. I one house agree with you uh, on everything, but how are you planning to be ready if you are not in right now? Oh, I'm not planning to be ready. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus, again, like you mentioned, like App Store, right? Like when App Store started, yes, a lot of people started to make uh, like applications for iPhone, but every application but not every but many applications for your phones they need parts like the same right you need metrics you need analytics you need localization you need some backends all the things are there are just like new new market new scope true but the thing is uh you know when app store got created uh you, people got millions of dollars on building farting up or the art for prayers or things like that and we are witnessing the very same boom and in order to understand what will be the farting up for the VR, you have to have a VR now. I mean, uh, maybe I'm, uh, I'm not uh, one of these visionaries who, who can predict the future. Actually, uh, still out of topics, but mm -hmm. another thing that still is like boiling, but no thing, nothing outcome yet, it's quantum computing. Okay. People talk about it and very scared about quantum computers bre like breaks um, encryption. Um, but still, there is no like nothing really there. Like, companies doing some things that I know they use quantum computers for some research, but that's it. Maybe it could be bigger one if we actually have some breakthrough and make this cheaper and faster and so on. Um, you know, I, I don't have anything to say about the quantum computing specifically, but this actually remind me one uh, topic from where I um, getting the news like this. I will try to get to get it very, very fast. Uh, shit. So it's actually not that easy as I thought. Um, <laughs> so there is this service that was created by several uh, famous Twitter people related to AI. It's not um, super popular, so I don't think they have a, even a website. So it's called AI News. And they're selling it through the sending it, not the selling it, through the burn down. So uh, button down dot email slash AI News. And if you actually want to pay attention to AI world, I must say this is the best. In a sense that they summarizing uh, the top Twitter account, Discord messages, any news. So it's not a clickbait news. They actually have a very targeted several Discord channels, several Twitter accounts, and summarizing news from this. Highly recommend. Like this is the best. I, I, I is it free or paid? Absolutely free. Absolutely free. It was mm. created by someone for himself, and then he sourced it for several friends, and then he just created it for everyone. Um, oh my, they have uh, domain dot email. Dot email, yes. <laughs> I wonder if someone has email at email dot email. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a feedback, by the way. Sumist, uh, for example, is one of the uh, one of the um, uh, top people in the PyTorch community. Andre. Come on, <laughs> yeah, Andre. You see, you see, this is this is from Andre Carpati, <laughs> but instead of putting his last name, they put Andre without the last name. <laughs> some Andre, <laughs> some some Andre from the streets <laughs> told that this is best newsletter. This Andre that they referring here as Andre is actually Andre Carpati, not just just. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but yeah. So, like, a, um, we have like a bunch of politics in our party. One of them is Joe. <laughs> yes, yes, right? yes. Some Joe. Some Joe, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Anyway, it's fun. It's just fun. Uh, Joe from the street. Exactly. Uh, anyway, let's try to try to go back to our topics. Uh, mm -hmm. Topics, topics. Where are they? Um, Yes, it's actually yours, my friend. Uh, Fisker. Fisker uh, got killed oh, by YouTube. I YouTuber. think it's just like a funny story. There is a YouTuber, MKH. I always forget, like, this is talking. But the sto story is that the YouTuber was reviewing a car from Fisker. Mm -hmm. And, like, from what I've seen on the video, car is really bad. Like, the software is lagging, the, like, features are strange. It's just, like, pretty, pretty bad car. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's cost actually, it's not like a premium car, but it's still not like very, very cheap one where we can say, hey, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And he releases YouTube and then a company representative try to, you know, damage control it and call to um, the dealer who actually landed this, him, him, this like YouTuber this car and try to say, hey, give us his win. They try to like track him or something. It, like, it was really shitty station. But the thing is, after his when he put review on youtube and after the situations as a whole company go down even a lot like and then i go to bankruptcy like they, they try like there's a chance they go to go bankrupt completely uh -huh. uh, and people like hey he like youtuber killed the company obviously it's not like this like uh, their down downfall started last year because like as a product is pretty shitty but it's still funny because i think i think some paper mentions that he has more subscribers than like New York and few major outlet like news outlets combined. So it's interesting like how like one opinion can actually you know hit a company a product. But again, to be fair, like I've seen his review and he was like pretty like he was mildly outraged. Outraged, but if I buy a car with a, such features, I would just return it. Makes sense. Uh, you know, this remind me for the fact that uh, not many people understand, but even Super Bowl that supposed to basically has the biggest audience uh, ever even super bowl doesn't have as many viewers as some of the youtube channels mm -hmm. uh so yeah people have tendency to underestimate some of the youtubers for sure uh that makes sense by the way i haven't heard about this company so now from this news i <laughs> at least learn you hear about this youtuber no, I haven't heard about him. MKB. Really? Nope, nope. He's I, actually pretty good on Apple devices and stuff, but it's surprising. He's a, you see, he can, he can down the whole company. I think I've seen the, his face. This is his face. I think I've seen yeah, the video. So 100%. By the way, we are nearing the 30 people that are listening us live. We have 26 right now. Yeah. 26 people yes uh hi everyone <laughs> <laughs> Hope we're not very boring um and, and don't forget to go to the discord where you can actually ask question to us and maybe we actually even will respond but yeah actually I, i'll try to look at discord i mean we don't have m much activity there i think i can promise starting next uh episode i will open it and, and look at it <laughs> Yes, uh, same here. I think we, uh, I will find a way to publish it. So people have the link on the episode because right now I don't think it's even published anywhere. So something, oh, I want to click on it. Where, 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 where? Uh, so yes, uh, stay tuned, stay tuned, so to speak. By the way, speaking about the mass media, I have this tweet, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of quickly find it, but let me just vocalize it. So I, as a joke, I said that on last crypto bull run, uh, I have lost tons of the money and I'm really prepared prepared to, to, to double it this time. Uh, and and uh, man, these have opened the gate of hell. I, I got at least hundreds. I, I, I shit you not. Uh, many of them got eventually removed quite quickly. Many of them I reported, but you still can find at least thousands left um, uh, answers in a, in a sense like, oh, you got scammed? You guys come, don't worry. Here is a guy. Like this is a guy. Just, just, just DM him your private key, and he will be able to. <laughs> to so essentially, bots like the Twitter has, like they try to scam you. Yeah, that scammers try to scam you by providing protection from scammers. 
Seems legit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's like uh, recently there was news. I don't remember exactly. It's like a short topic. Uh, but there was a company who provide you um, I was like a, um, service for removing your personal data from internet, you know, to clean mm. it out. Like, and they actually do the opposite on the side note. Like they try to like put people personal information, spread it so they have a better business. Shit. Um you know, this reminds me, we spoke about IDX, but there is a service like IDX uh, uh, personal, personal data, I think. I think it's, a, yes, IDX. <laughs> we spoke about IDX from Google, there is a service IDX, that's why I remember it, yes. Uh, so there are ID, services like IDX that in US actually trying to protect your identity. And this is the only case that I actually would recommend using them. They ask you tons of the question, including your SSN. But here is a catch. They, uh, they are not free, so you can just mm -hmm. use them for free. And they provide you insurance in terms of a quite uh, high uh, amount of cost that they will reimburse you for reinstating your identity mm -hmm. in case of the shift. So yes, you're giving them a SSN, but if someone will impersonate you, you go to them and they work with lawyers to give you actually new SSN, new identity, if your mm -hmm. identity got, got stolen. Uh, and they obviously monitor everything. They monitor deep net, they monitor tons of the stuff and they tell you, oh, we see your data here. We don't see anything in impersonation yet, but like mm -hmm. your data, this data is there. So it's it's really nice. And you literally can give them everything you're comfortable giving them because for identity, sure, they can restore it. But for example, if you even want, you can give them some of your password and they will tell if this password is mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere. But obviously this is only personal. Passwords, like one password is doing it in a nice way. Uh, I don't think that one password, uh, no, this is not that type of, so if you will decide to give them a password, they will scar deep net and they can tell you, we have found this password mm -hmm. somewhere on the scan. They literally have the team that buying databases that are sold mm -hmm. on deep net and scanning. That service one password not providing yet. Mm, they, they do provide like if your password is one of the leaked passwords, they notify you. Correct, but they, this is the going from opposite. If they know that service been hacked, oh yeah, they will notify that oh this service been hacked on this date and you have created the password after. No, no, I, I think it's not only not only this one, but also uh, they also have a thing. They have a list of just literally list of passwords, and if one of them match any of your passwords, they will notify you. Mm. But they do it in a, a tricky way. They don't really get your password. They don't decrypt it. They send you hashes of something. I see, I see, I see. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, looks like none of my passwords got, <laughs> got leaked. <laughs> yeah. uh, luckily enough. Uh, okay, okay, makes sense. I did get messages like, oh, the data from this site got leaked, so change your password. That, yes, that I had many, many times. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, when I start doing my, my project on the GitHub, uh, do you know about the secret repository .github? Mm, no. So I, I recently learned about this. So it's just coming back to project that I saw. So you see on my screen right now, this is an org. And you see there is a readme of the org. Oh, you're muted. Wait, you're muted. And you don't have a superpower to speak when you're muted. Oh, yes. um, I remember there was a separate way to how you can create a static website that will be visible on a domain for your... For your that's different. That's different. Yes, because that's a website. And this is a readme on the org. So it's mm -hmm. a readme MD. And turns out that there is an actually secret repository it's called .github. And then have many things, including that if you put there, you're creating a profile folder there. And if you're putting there README, this README will be the one that your organization showing for anyone who opening it. I wonder what else it actually can do. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's just, just an interesting thing that I recently have learned and wanted to share, wanted to share. Um, Let's finish with your topic. We still have uh, five minutes or so left, and I see that you have an interesting topic about the AI. So why not to finish on it? 
Oh, it's not a big one. Uh, DeepMind, they, they show you AI games that learn some, like how to play games. Um, so you don't use it for competitive, more like just to see how it works with uh, regular games. Um, but I feel like over time we get an, get a more sophisticated cheaters who use not just like a software, but just screen and then controls and use the AI to help them. So it will be pretty pretty sad to, to play competitive games in uh, some time. Which is interesting, like how people will solve it, right? Like probably playing with the people you know or something like this. Yeah, it's, it's actually remind me problem with spam because we are not too far away from the play point where spam will be again indistinguishable from genuine emails. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what you will do at that point. Like what will the human... Honest, mm -hmm. One of the things that I always wanted with email is to have like, especially with email newsletters and subscriptions, to do opt-in. Like I opt in in my email client for this to, to, to receive it, something like this, like on my side. You know, like right now you get the mail subscription, you can click on subscribe, you go to some third party service, which may or may not stop sending you. But ideally I just want, okay, just prevent everything until I allow it. And that's it. Like True, but I guess I'm speaking about this, you know, worst type, completely legal spam that you have not signed up. It's just just they sending it to you. And today we are more or less. Yeah, but it's the same like, you know, like when you get a call, if I usually call not from my contact book, I often don't answer. I just wait. It goes to, to whatever. I just usually don't listen. Interesting. I cannot. Yeah, I, I personally cannot. Uh, uh, cannot use that mode just yet. Mode just yet. I do have several people that might call me, whose phone mm. I do not know. Mm. So either pre-screening or, or, but I guess the meta point that I was trying to make with a future where we will have AI that indistinguishable from humans, we might end up in this future where you actually have to provide your credentials. And this theoretical possibility, we will end up in the place where, uh, I don't know if you know this, there's a world coin from Sam Altman, uh, world coin. So this is, uh, this is effectively an interesting project where uh, it's another, yet another cryptocurrency, crypto token, so to speak. But the idea behind it that in order to create a wallet, you have to go to special places. We have one in SF, one in Palo Alto, where they will scan the retina of your eye and they will attach your wallet to that uh, biometrical mm -hmm. data. So you as a human being cannot create more than one wallet and each wallet attached to a real human being. This is actually something I was thinking long time about how to solve this problem, like how we can make an online account private, but in a way that no one actually um, like no one can create duplicates, you know, especially like for online communities. You, you want people to be anonymous, but you want, don't want to to bring people who you banned like back. And this is actually a pretty good solution. Like if people who scan your rating is some authorized dealers and you know who they are and uh, they have process to scan your rating without even getting your documents or your face or anything else, that may work. So this is at least an idea behind, and, and to be fair, uh, Sam Altman building two ideas in the same project. Uh, so one is exactly what they just said, wallet that shows that you are the real human being. But another one on top of this, if you have a wallet and you're actually using it daily, they will be giving you one coin per week. I think right now coin is cost $6. So you're effectively getting a free allowance of $6 per week. And the whole idea, as he himself described it, if I remember correctly, that in the future we will have AI that uh, will take over the world and will do our jobs this will be the way to redistribute wealth so you will be getting these coins for free because you know that's uh, and this is bullshit part so that's why i haven't started with how's called a basic income i forgot to, uh, yeah basic income yes basic guarantee income yes that part i don't believe in this project but the first one uh privacy but verifiable human being behind the keyboard i think there is something to it there is something to it but again, uh, we have this project just because government have not yet stepped in and have not provided the, the API services and software for doing so. Because even with this project, um, I can easily see 
how you can find the communities and societies on this planet that will be more than happy at this point of development of the project to give you their wallets for mm -hmm. like hundred dollars yeah that's true uh it's much harder to find someone who will give you their birth certificate and even if they do so in us it's um yeah i i just th that's probably much harder much much mm -hmm. harder um yeah i don't know yeah i think uh like i'm probably out of time but i think like one of the way to do verify is actually not doing like whatever you have but use your connections and reputation system you know like uh, you are you because 100 people say you are you but they also put their reputations on that so if they try to scam and give your identity to other persons, they will suffer as well. Yeah, I think there is something to it because in the end of the day, this is how the world works right now. Mm -hmm. Someone we recommend each other and we vouch for each other. And uh, yeah, I think you're right. This is a future way of creating communities. Anyway, let's end up here. We actually brought, a, uh, we actually get to our record 32 people, more than 30 today, mm -hmm. so 32. Uh, so yes, our new new records for the show, uh, 32 live, live listeners. Thank you everyone who've been with us up to this yep. point. Thanks everyone. Uh, yeah, any mm -hmm. other last words? No. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, folks. We will talk to you same place uh, next week, same time. Actually, not same time. A little bit earlier. Almost same yeah. time. Yeah. See you. Okay, we are and wait a second, let me stop live. Now folks we're finishing for for real, for real.